Good morning. And welcome to worship here at Our Savior's Lutheran Church here in Long Beach. And for those joining us online, I invite you to stand as you are able. And we'll continue our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your bountiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, the congregation may be seated. And although it's not printed, and I haven't put this in the bulletin for some time, we do have our children's chat. So note to myself to edit my own bulletin. Come on up. All right. Ooh. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Wow, I see people have bags. 
Let's see. Oh, wow, you brought some stuff. Wow. Oh, wow. You, all, you have all come prepared, right? You have, yeah, this is great. This is kind of what Jesus is talking about in his gospel. He tells a story about uh, people that are waiting to go to a wedding. Have you ever been to a wedding? Big celebration, people get married, the big party, people that think they can dance really well, but they maybe shouldn't be dancing. Yeah, funeral? Yeah, it's kind of the opposite, yeah. Wedding are really joyful times, joyful events, and you don't want to miss out, right? Well, Jesus tells a story about like 10 bridesmaids. Five of them are wise and five were foolish. And the five wise ones were prepared because they were waiting at night. They had to wait for the bridegroom. That's the person, the man getting married. Um, they were waiting for him to come, and it got late at night. What do you need late at night? Yeah, you need lamps. You need light, right? So some had, they all had lamps, but back then they used oil in their lamps. Which ones do you think had oil? Yeah, the five wise ones. They were prepared, just like you're prepared for Sunday school, right? You have your bags full of stuff and you're ready to go. Yay, right? Um, and the other ones were not. So then when the bridegroom came, because the other ones had to go to the city and buy oil for their lamps, and the five went to the wedding party and the other five, they got locked out. It kind of made them sad, right? So we want to make sure that we're prepared, right? And Jesus is trying to teach his disciples how to prepare themselves for when God comes um, to bring in a new era, a new time of, of peace and of justice and of love. Okay? So I'm glad you're prepared because what you're bringing are things to share with other people, right? How do you think that's going to make other people who receive the things that you're, you're bringing? Yeah, it's going to make them feel happy. It's going to make them feel good. And that's what God's trying to teach us, to prepare ourselves so that we can help make others feel happy and feel good, right? And that helps the whole world, right? Okay, so let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you continue to uh, prepare the hearts and minds of all of our young people to fill them with your compassion and love. Uh, we ask that you lead them and guide them in all that they say and do. Be with their teachers, be with their, their parents, and all those who continue to show them your way of love and compassion. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. And we'll see you when you return from Sunday school. Our first reading is from Amos chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. Alas for you who desire the, the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Word of God, word of life.
Our second lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we de declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will, will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you, neither, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace be with you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Pray with me, please. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So it was last week that we turned our clocks back, right? But time keeps flying by, doesn't it? Now it's the second week of November, which can only mean one thing. Coast 103.5 is playing Christmas music. <laughs> Around the clock, 24-7, baby. Nobody else is as excited as I am, no? I know my kids are not as excited as I am. But it's so close to the end of the year, right? How many of us may want to skip the rest of November, jump over Thanksgiving, get right to Christmas, right? A few of us might want to do that. But then what is the, the end? Like skipping to the end of the year, skipping to Christmas, what is the end? What does it look like in the end? Does the end look like Christmas Day opening up presents or, or Christmas dinner surrounded with family and friends? And that what? then what? What happens next? 
Some of us who are exhausted from decorating, shopping, wrapping presents, baking, hosting, family and friends. You know the 12 pains of Christmas? And then after opening presents, the kids might be excited to play with their new toy until they eventually get bored and throw it out, unless it's an iPhone. If they get an iPhone and they're a teenager, they're going to be on it for the next five years, or until it dies or breaks, right? Or maybe it's the December to remember, and the spouse is like, you bought a car? Why would you make a major purchase without discussing it with me first, right? Seriously? But this is maybe what the end of the year looks like. Uh, the end, the culmination of Christmas, and the things that we might be looking forward to this time of the year. But over the next few Sundays, we will be coming to the end of the church year with Christ the King Sunday. And we will then welcome in a new church year, a new church calendar in December with the season of Advent culminating with the celebration of the birth of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, on Christmas. Now, most of our readings over the next few weeks will have eschatological themes. Now, eschatology is just a big fancy word for the study of the end times. Bum, 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 right? Now, there are more than a few people who have dived into holy scriptures from various traditions and religions to try to decipher and decode when and how the world is going to end, right? And there's many movies that have been made as well. Now, they may have theories about who might be saved from calamities such as earthquakes, wars, the rise of the Antichrist, when and where all these things will begin, what steps might be taken to prepare for it. And there are some who see themselves as having a role in helping to make the end times come sooner than expected. All of this stuff is nothing new. Over the centuries, there have been plenty of people, your Hal Lindsay's, some biblical scholars, theologians, even scientists like Sir Isaac Newton being one of them, who tried to decipher when, where, and how the end times would take place. But somehow, all of us here survived Y2K, didn't we? Or we all survived 2012, and the Mayan prophecy, and some other things over the years. In our gospel reading today, Jesus says, Then the kingdom or the empire of heaven will be like this. Jesus was trying to prepare his followers for the coming of of the empire of heaven and how they would need to be prepared, to be alert, to keep awake for when that empire of heaven comes. The parable that Jesus tells involves ten bridesmaids waiting for a bridegroom who has been delayed. Each of the bridesmaids had oil lamps. Some were wise, that is, they took extra oil for their lamps, and some were foolish. They went without any oil. The wisdom and foolishness had to do with their preparation. And Jesus tells his followers to always be prepared for the coming of the reign of heaven because you never know when it will come. But what exactly is the kingdom, the empire, or the reign of heaven that should be expected? And how do you prepare for such a thing? And another thing, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? the coming of the empire of heaven. I guess that depends on your perspective. I think Amos might have something to say to us this morning about what the kingdom or empire of heaven, may, coming of the kingdom or empire of heaven might be like, or what it might not be like. But first we need to think about who Amos is. What was his message, and how does it connect with Jesus' teaching for his disciples and for us today? You see, Amos was from the southern kingdom of Judah during the time of the reign of Jeroboam II, the king in the northern kingdom of Israel, and while Uzziah was the king of Judah. Amos was a sheep herder by trade, and for some reason, God really likes sheep herders, doesn't he? But Amos was called by God to speak out against the injustices of Israel in the north and its leaders. 
The interesting thing is that Israel had recently conquered some of its weaker neighbors, consolidated power, and was enjoying the most prosperous times in its history. So why would God call a sheep herder in a rival kingdom to go out and speak out against Israel and the king in the north during their most prosperous times? Well, things were really good there if you were rich and powerful. But the power and wealth came off the blood, sweat, and tears of their own poor. Amos wrote, quote, They hate the one who repro- reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from, their, from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. See, prosperity for the few was injustice for the multitudes. Amos reminded the leaders of Israel that, quote, Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. You see, Amos prophesied that the end times would come to the kingdom of Israel, and its leaders would be receiving a lot worse than a few lumps of coal in their stockings. Because they had oppressed their own people. Their sacrifices and burnt offerings would not save them. Their festival worship meant nothing to God because they refused to grant justice for the poor and the oppressed. And Amos reminds the leaders of Israel, quote, Seek good and not evil that you may live, and so that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you. Just as you have said, hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Jesus taught his disciples about the coming of the kingdom or the empire of God. Jesus was calling his disciples just as he calls us to prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of God's reign of justice that doesn't look at all like this world's ways of injustice. The promise is that the age of oppression would come to an end and a new age, a new era of peace and justice might be ushered in. The oppressors and the emperors of this world will get what they have coming to them in the end. For all empires fall. The empire of God isn't even an empire at all. It is a beloved community founded upon principles of justice, equity, compassion, and love. And that's the thing about end times. They always happen. They have always happened. And they will continue to happen until we finally and fully understand what it means to do justice, to love kindness, walk humbly with God, and live as a beloved community. The beloved community that God intends for us. And every ending marks another new beginning. Every ending is another chance for us to build a new community or a more just society on values that seek to end poverty, to end discrimination, to put an end to intolerance and to hate. And every now and again, we get a do-over, if you will. I think what Jesus is saying is we can't force the next set of end times like the zealots and the violent revolutionaries tried to do in the 60s of the common era. But all we can do is to prepare our hearts and our minds to be more loving, more compassionate, and more kind, so that when the empires of this world do fall, that we might be ready, willing, and able to pick up some of the pieces and to rebuild our communities, 
to be more just and equitable for all people. So maybe listening to some Christmas music a little early might help us get into a more loving and compassionate mood. Maybe it will help us be kinder and gentler with one another as we wait for the empires of this world, which we can name as hatred, greed, bigotry, violence, and war, that these empires might begin to fall as stars in the sky, no more to be worshipped and glorified as the false idols that they are. And we pray that one day those evil empires will come to an end, and that God's empire of peace and justice shall reign over the earth as it is in heaven. So in the meantime, let us prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the bridegroom, to receive the Prince of Peace. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, for whom we wait, come quickly to your people, bring your salvation, and center us in hope found only in you. Deepen our faith through meaningful worship and send us out with your justice and truth. Hear us, O God. O God, for whom we watch, we glimpse your power in rushing water and your beauty in the darkening night. Restore this creation and provide clean water to all people and animals. Save us from foolish, wasteful living. Hear us, O God. O God, for whom we long, let justice roll down like waters on all nations. 
Bless citizens with wise leaders. Save your children from war. We pray for the veterans of this community that they may be supported and loved. Hear us, O God. O oh God, in whom we hope, we pray for all who are in need. Provide for those who experience homelessness or hunger. Support the under or under unemployed and comfort any who are suffering this day, especially B.J. Wells, Layla Bartz, Felicia Singleton, and Albert Martinez. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, for whom we listen, inspire the music ministry of our congregation. Let our worship with songs to proclaim your greatness. Help us to sing and dance with joy and tell boldly of your salvation. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, in whom we remain, we remember our loved ones who have died and now live in you Bring comfort and the assurance of new life to all who grieve. Hear us, O God. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with your neighbor.
God of all goodness, generations have turned to you gathered around your table and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings. We may feast upon your very self and care for all you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you send to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come, and feast at Jesus' table.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Lord Jesus, in this simple, simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. You may be seated for this week's announcements. Please join us for fellow, fellowship following the uh, worship service in the fellowship hall. Um, the special offering for this month, November, still having a hard time with that, November, um, is for Lutheran Social Services. I think most of us are aware that usually this time of the year as it starts to get a little bit cooler um, and uh, a lot of people in need coming closer to the holidays and a lot of opportunities to serve. Uh, either food pantries, community meals, other things like that. And LSS of Long Beach does a, a wonderful job of serving the greater Long Beach community. Uh, so we ask that you uh, consider the uh, noisy offering for LSS of Long Beach. Bible study every uh, Wednesday, 11 o'clock, either online or in person in the choir room. So please join us for that. And then because it is that time of the year, um, or getting close to that time of the year, you'll see in the bulletin the Advent midweek uh, schedule as well as uh, advertisement for our angel tree, which is over there right now. So you can see it all lit up. We're getting ready for the holidays already. Um, and so uh, please consider making donations for the angel tree, and you can see that uh, in the bulletin as well. And then we'll be doing uh, our midweek devotions will be Thursdays at 6 o'clock. Most of the time it'll be in the chapel over here, and we'll be doing devotions there. With the exception of the second week, December 7th, we'll be in the fellowship hall, and there will be pizza. There will be food um, and caroling. So we're going to be doing some caroling. We're going to be going over to Lutheran Towers. Uh, and all are welcome to join us, invite family, friends, and others. And we'll spread some holiday cheer. Sound like fun? Yay. Um, and, I think, uh, and then we also have the Christmas Eve schedule as well. This is one of those uh, strange years where Christmas Eve falls on the fourth Sunday in Advent as well. Um, so we're going to be doing our fourth week of Advent on Saturday. Uh, we're going to be hosting our Jazz Vespers Saturday evening at 5 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Uh, and then you get to sleep in Christmas Eve so that you can be ready to go, especially those of you with children and grandchildren. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but we'll have our 4 o'clock family style service and a 7 o'clock candlelight service on Christmas Eve. So that's kind of the schedule for uh, December, um, which is just around the corner, right? Again, time flies. And I think those are the main announcements that I have uh, for today. Is there anything else? Did I miss anything? I know I did. But remind me next week. So. Okay. Um, seeing none, please stand as you are able and receive the blessing. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strength, strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.
beloved in God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you.